Hey, how you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Emilio. I work in tech and I absolutely love it and hopefully you do too. Super excited today to be talking about the day in the life of a game developer, a game programmer. Now I myself am not a game developer, so I'm not an expert in this field, but we've got something lined up. We're going to be chatting to a real life game developer. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff around what the day looks like, what are some of the technologies that he's using, what are the tools that he's using, and what does the end product sort of look like. It's going to be a really exciting video. I know that you'll definitely find helpful. Before we do get into that, please remember to, as always, to subscribe, clicking on the button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So we've got my friend Josh Lawrence lined up. Let's talk to him now. Cool, well, thanks so much for, for tuning in, uh, Josh. I really appreciate you spending the time. Why don't you start maybe give you a bit of an overview about yourself, what do you do? Um, how did you get to where you are right now? So my name is Josh. Um, I've been working in uh, game development since 2017. Um, I originally studied a Bachelor of Mathematics and Computing at um, the University of Technology, Sydney, or UTS, um, and then moved into uh, studying a Master's of Teaching uh, majoring in mathematics, so I'm a math teacher. And then I feel like I probably had some sort of like quarter life crisis at some point, had a breakup. It was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I want to be a teacher forever. I want to go do something really cool. So I decided that I would go chase the dream, chase every every little boy's dream and study game development. So I went to um, AIE, the Academy of Interactive Entertainment. Um, and studied a advanced diploma of game programming. I applied for jobs all over Australia and ended up landing a job at Big Ant Studios. You mentioned that you had to go to school and you studied. There'd obviously be people watching this going, oh man, do I have to go and go to university? Do I have to get a graduate degree? Why did you choose to go down the education route? Is that something that you had to go do to get where you are right now? Being a teacher myself, I like really highly regard education um, and I love learning things. I love learning that just seemed like kind of the, the best choice for me i learned better learning in person from people there's a lot of tutorials and things online which are free and, and accessible for people but yeah i i learn way better in front of people with people being able to ask questions and um and see someone physically in front of me also gave me the the time like i had to carve out time to go to classes and that was a forced thing that i had to do whereas if i was just trying to become a game developer by making games by myself at home i think i would find it really hard to focus myself on that at home it can be quite good for uh companies if you want to work for companies um and bigger studios i think they like to see a piece of paper i mean i've sort of got the same um story as you in a way where i sort of had to go through university and stuff as well and I did find it helpful, especially landing my first job in technology was having that piece of paper, as you said, to sort of say, hey, to my employer, but look, I've got a graduate degree in whatever. And that's, I think that's definitely what um, helped me out. So let's talk now about your your day job. What is the life of a game programmer look like? Run me through start to finish. We, we come in, uh, if we're starting a brand, brand new project, all of our designers and artists um, and often the lead programmers will have a lot of discussions about uh, what this new game is going to look like. So there is a thing called a GDD or a game design document, um, which has everything that the game would have in it. Um, it's got a huge breakdown of every single section of the game, um, all the, the gameplay, the controls, um, the like the online system um because all of our games have like online playability where people converse each other um all the the settings everything to do with that is all in this one document or at least broken up over a bunch of documents that can get sent to the relevant people and then those designs get broken up into tiny little pieces that then get sent out to everyone working in the company so that's all the artists will get all of the art parts. The programmers will get all the like building the entire, you know, like all the, the foundations, all the systems and things like that. 
Um, and they will get broken up into things called tickets. We have a ticketing system. The designers and producers can write exactly what every job is. They will tell you exactly what the code needs to do. If they ever need to contact you, they can say, oh, I'm just checking in with the progress of ticket one, two, three. And then you can go to your, uh, your list of jobs and you can say, oh yeah, I'll be coming up to that soon or I'm halfway through, something like that. Sometimes I have work where I need to wait for animations to be completed. So there's jobs that I get sent that I can't actually complete yet. Then a producer might come over and say, oh, why is this blocked? And then they can chase it up and maybe push the animator to, to actually finish it off. So let's talk tech. You've obviously got tickets coming in. Talk to me about what do you do from there? What are you writing? What sort of code are you writing? What sort of apps are you using? Uh, as with probably most programmers, uh, program development companies, um, we use uh, Microsoft Visual Studio um, for a bulk of our programming. Um, so we use that primarily for the C++ side of our uh, engine, which does a lot of the um, the heavy lifting. It does a lot of the the rendering, so actually getting uh, images and and uh, 3D models and things to appear on the screen. Um, and then we have a, another uh, programming IDE or um, development environment called uh, Tilt. We use that for our Lua programming. Um, so our Lua, so Lua is a as a like a scripting language. It's very, um, uh, in a way, it's a simple language. It's similar-ish to like Python, I guess. Um, and C++ is very like complex, but we have a way of uh, binding those together and connecting them. So um, we often have Lua calling the more, like simple Lua calling the more complex functions in C. Um, to do things and C will be able to do them a lot faster. Yeah, so they they work in tandem. They're the two main programming languages we use. Um, occasionally we have to use a bit of Python, but that is for barely like 1% of my job. So why are you using like multiple languages? Like is C++ enough? Is, it, is there a limitation with C++ that you can't do with Python or any of the other um, programming languages or? So C++ definitely no limitations on C++. Um, at all. C++ is like the base standard. It can do anything and everything you want, but it's just very, I guess it's very complex. It's a lot harder to read, a lot harder to understand, and uh, can take a long time to write big chunks of code. But when we're in Lua, Lua being a scripting language, it's very fast to iterate. Um, it's a lot faster to yeah, be able to write much simpler code that does the same stuff over in C++. Maybe it'll take a bit longer, but the development time is a lot shorter. All right, so you're, so you're programming, uh, you're doing all this sort of stuff. So you're obviously working uh, on a specific little piece with other people in the team who are working on other little pieces. What happens from there? You obviously have to bring all of that together. You sort of compile it together. Um, does it go to, to like through some sort of um, quality testing? Obviously, because there's a lot of pieces, and you know, to make a game, you're writing a a new sporting game. There's a lot of different pieces. So how does how does all of that fit together to give you the end product? All of our uh, code base, um, all of the art assets, everything is on a server in our office um, under source control. So for those who might not know what source control is. Um, it's where you can upload little chunks of a project. So um, a piece of art or a piece of code, you can upload it onto, um, it's kind of like the cloud, I guess. And so you can push it up to the cloud. And then once you've pushed it, it's there. And then people can grab that and um, grab your changes and put them on their machine. So then they've got the latest version of the game at all times. So they can grab your code, they can grab your art, all of that, but it lives somewhere else. Um, but then you make a local version of that on your machine where you can code, you can break it, you can do whatever you want to it and it won't affect anyone else. Um, but you just keep working on that until you push it up. So that's kind of uh, when, when we start a new project, they uh, basically it's almost like 
grabbing a new folder, putting it on the server um, with the previous cricket game, for example, everyone grabs that, that new version of the cricket game, grabs it down, starts working on it. There'd be hundreds of pieces of uh, new work being pushed up mm. to that server every single day. Um, new pieces of art, new pieces of code all the time, new bugs fixed, things like that. So throughout the day, you're constantly grabbing everything that's brand new um, off the server. And yeah, that's it's kind of a very slow iterative process. Over the six months, eight months of the life cycle of a game, um, we are just constantly grabbing the new version, changing it, pushing it back up. So then when you make those changes um, and then you push your changes back, it finds, it goes through the entire project, which also exists on the server. And it goes, these things are different to what is currently on the master, um, on the master version. So then that's what you commit. So besides all of that, there is quality assurance. We have a, a QA team. Um, we have a, a bunch of new young people uh, coming in and they come in and they're, they're our game testers. They grab that version, whatever version is the latest at the time, grab it off the server, test it, just play the game. There's a, a QA manager who breaks down all of the, the parts of the game, divvies those parts up to all of the QA team, and they have a, a section to test, just like we all have a section to make. Um, they all have like a specific section that they will just be playing for months and months and months finding that all sounds, of the- That sounds really cool, by the way, to be a game tester, just somebody who just comes in and just plays games all day. Is that is that sort of what it's like? Sounds great, but I can imagine it would be very, very tedious. Um, some, of the, some of the bugs that I've gotten have been insane. I don't know how they've ever gotten to that point where they're like, oh yeah, I like went in, started a, a cricket match as Australia versus England, went in, um, I was batting, I hit a six, and then I went in, I changed sides to then be playing as England, and then I bowled, and then I went in, I changed an audio setting, and it crashed. And that is the only way that it crashes. It's like, I don't know how they did that. <laughs> I, it's, it's weird. And so you get crazy bugs, and the QA guys are just doing the weirdest things. Um, like, yeah. It's, sometimes it's probably pretty fun, especially on a fresh project. Um, when it's when it's built out enough and there's a lot of features and stuff, there'd probably be some some pretty cool stuff there. But when you're probably testing the same thing for eight months straight, I would imagine it gets pretty tedious over yeah, time. Yeah, sounds like it. And, and, and for those of you watching who don't know what cricket is, uh, it's a game that we play here in Australia with a bat and a ball. A little bit like baseball for you Americans, but uh, there you go. So you've gone through all of this. You've done the testing. You've done the development. Um, the next step is what? Like, where do you go from there? How do you get it out to the public? We we make games for uh, PC, um, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo. We have to submit those games to Nintendo, Microsoft, um, Sony for their own testing. Um, so they have a whole bunch of testing um, themselves. So it has to meet their standards of game. They will often send back and say, this isn't good enough. You have to fix these things. And then we then spend the next week, two weeks, trying to fix those and submit again. Um, and I think that is like our crunch time is getting the submissions accepted that that will then allow us to put our games on their system. Um, yeah. We also have a, a publisher um, that we work with over in the UK and uh, they do a lot of the the publishing side, getting the discs made, distribution, advertising, mm. a lot of that. Nice. That that's a good little snapshot. Now, if there's somebody watching this and hey, they they are interested in maybe getting into, you know, game programming, they want to explore that a little bit more. Should they do it? Should they not do it? Uh, is gaming the best sort of programming? Should they focus on other sorts of apps? What would be best to be learning? Um, I think you learn a lot of uh, basic programming concepts through game development um, and game development is probably the most fun way to learn programming because you actually can physically see things happening and you can interact with it and you can get other people to play it 
which is uh, really exciting to watch other people play your work. Um, whereas if you were doing making an app or just making a, a more corporate sort of program, it's a little less exciting, you know? Um, especially if you like want to show your friends, they're like, it's a banking app. I don't know. <laughs> like, if, if you put a game in front of them, they will want to play it and you can get really good feedback. You can iterate on it. You can, you can work on it and get there. Games is super oversaturated. So be very, very careful. It's very, very hard to break into it um, at first, especially if you want to work for other companies. So be very careful. You have to work really, really hard at it. Um, but it is an amazing uh, place to be. The community is awesome. Like the, the other game developers, there are so many Facebook pages, YouTube uh, channels. There's just so many ways to learn, so many places to, to go um, for information, for learning, for tutorials. Um, so I think game development is a really, really good, fun, exciting way to learn programming from scratch. Nice, nice. Dude, that is a great way to end. Uh, I think that is super, super cool. And and I think it's you've given a lot of uh, a, good, a good overview around essentially what you do and given a lot of people some thinking around maybe where they want to head. You've got a YouTube channel. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? What, what you guys do? Sure. I've actually got a couple. Um, so my main one uh, is called ETO, which stands for each to their own. Basically, uh, video game, pop culture, comic books, all that sort of stuff. Um, we do like reviews, gameplays. Uh, lately, especially since COVID, we've been doing a lot of Twitch streams. Um, so live streaming on Twitch. My other channel is called The Stream Tapes. Um, I do that with one of the guys from uh, Big Ant Studios uh, from my work. His name is Andrew Chitty. We have that channel where we play games and talk over the top. We kind of look at the games that we're playing with a game developer perspective. Look, if anybody's interested, check out the uh, the show notes in the description below. I've got the links directly to those two channels. So do check those out. But thanks so much, Josh. Uh, we'll chat again soon. Not a problem. Thanks for having me, Emilio. So what a great interview. I hope that you found this helpful and hopefully you learned something new around the game developer. That's it for this video anyway. Thank you so much for spending the time. Really, really do appreciate it. Do what you need to do across the social medias as always by liking, commenting, subscribing. Click on the face right over there and also check out some of my other videos where we talk about all things tech. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.